Welcome to the first ever Stuff.TV Gadget Deathmatch. We're here today to destroy the Sansa E200 series and the iPod Nano. Yes, we're going to test these things to destruction. I've got the Nano here, Adam's got the Sansa, and we're going to put them through a series of real-world tests to find out which one is the most robust. Now, we really, really hate to do this, don't we? I'm, I'm gutted. It, I mean, these are brand new. These are fresh, out, mint out of the box. It seemed like a great idea at the time, but now I am, you know, this is, not only is this a new Nano, it hasn't got a single scratch on it, but, you know, we've got to do this in the name of science. So, uh, oops. Um, I've got to say, the iPod is looking incredibly intact. All it's got wrong with it is, um, is a bit of a tyre track on it. Um, otherwise, it's functioning perfectly. Screen's fine. There goes number two. Adam, how's the Sansa? It's technically still on, as you'll see the blue light is still working on the scroll wheel. And the screen's on too, it's just gone psychedelic. Uh, the screen is so, totally bust, uh, ultimately. So I think uh, it's round one to the Nano. Definitely, on to round two, which is the water round. So, the water test for MP3s. We're now going to take our personal stereo to the most personal of places. But what happens when it all goes horribly wrong? Well, it doesn't seem to have improved its uh, prospects. It's uh, still not turning on properly, but as you can see, the blue glow, blue glowing scroll wheel is working perfectly. Um, and uh, yeah, intact. It seems to uh, be quite keen on the toilet, in fact. I hate to do it, but... Well, I could, I could hear that filling up with water, which isn't a good sign, and it's not got much life to it. Let's hope the hairdryer works. Well, we've run over them, we've drowned them, and now we're gonna finally destroy these MP3 players. But before we do, let's have a look at where they are now. Now, the iPod Nano, it's looking pretty good, but it's just not working at all. Um, at least it's left a beautiful corpse, I guess, but Adam, how about yours? Well, by comparison, the Sandisk Sansa, it's, uh, the screen's not looking too hot anymore, but I do have a completely pointless, but very pretty glowing blue light. Um, so at the moment, I think I'm winning. Yeah, I d that is pretty useful. Uh, and, and unless we can breathe some life back into this, I think the Sansa might be a victor. Right, let's shoot them. I mean, literally, let's shoot them and see how they fare and whether they would save your life if necessary. Well, both MP3 players were pretty thoroughly destroyed, but the Sansa just shades it for still having a blue light after we dropped it in the toilet. Hello and welcome to the Stuff.TV Gadget Deathmatch. We're here today to test the Sony Ericsson W800i. And the Motorola Sliver, two of the most popular phones on the market. But the question is, how well will they stand up to our real world tests? Well, I can tell you, they're gonna get destroyed. But which one will get more destroyed? First off, we're gonna start by dropping them from a balcony like this. So my beloved Sony Ericsson W800i, my one of my favourite Walkman phones, it's not looking so hot now. Moderate scratching on the back, the uh, casing split open slightly as they're designed to do in these drop tests and uh, 
unfortunately keeping at the moment it's not working but I'm going to try reassembling it it's working Tom uh, well the, the Motorola slivers come apart um, but amazingly for such a slim phone it's uh, still totally working um, and I think it's done pretty well in fact there's hardly a scratch on it it's happened to all of us you're in a beer garden you're enjoying a nice pint and you're having a good conversation on your mobile at the same time and then all of a sudden everything goes wrong cheers tom cheers mm, mobile phony i think they've brewed long enough <laughs> let's uh let's take them out and see whether we can make a call shall we this one's not looking happy i've got to say it's got it's got foam inside the screen so uh, uh, I don't think this one's going to survive. And the Sony Ericsson, uh, it's drunk as well. It's, uh, this, the water test has put paid to it. It's not turning on. It's not looking good. Let's dry them off, see if they work, and then take them to the third and final test. This Motorola intermittently comes back to life. How about your Sony Ericsson? My Sony Ericsson is dead. Dead as a dodo. It's not having any of it. Um, I've tried turning it on. It's not, not even any MP3 playback. Well, given that uh, we, we're now about to test them even further to destruction, I'm guessing Motorola has shaded it. But let's find out what would happen if you were in a crisis situation. If you had this in your breast pocket and somebody shot at you, would it protect you? Both mobile phones fared pretty well, but uh, let's face it, they're not going to make any calls on them. Our winner, though, is the Motorola Sliver, because even after being dropped in a pint of beer, it had a little bit of life to it. Welcome to the Stuff.TV Gadget Deathmatch, where we test two common gadgets to destruction, putting them through a series of real-life situations. Well, today we're testing what happens when you're playing on your games console and someone comes running past you and you knock it and it ends up skidding across a car park. It's a common occurrence, let's face it. And here we have pristine new Nintendo DSs and PSPs in ceramic white and it's brand new. This is terrible, this is all wrong. Right, well the ceramic white PSP has come off surprisingly well from the skid test. Um, there's a little bit of, um, well, there's not much scratching at all on the front. I turn it round, got a little bit of dirt there. I mean, you know, nothing severe. The Nintendo DS is also in remarkably good shape. Uh, it's still working, screens are fine. Just got a little bit of corner damage but really nothing to write home about. Right, we're up for the water test next. This is where we take our favorite portable consoles and see what would happen if they got caught in a torrential downpour. Or just if they had, say, a nasty gardening accident with Auntie Nora. How's yours, Tom? Hosed, I think. Um, the, there's a bit of life in it. If I switch the, click the switch, there's a green light comes on, screen flickers, and everything dies. How about the PSP? That's significantly better than the PSP. The PSP is, like Sony Ericsson, dead. Now, we were going to burn them, but we were told it was a little bit too dangerous. So instead, we brought them here to a shooting range where we're going to fire at them. Kapow. <laughs> And the clear victor on the games console war, this time, was Nintendo with the DS Lite. Both gadgets got hosed down, the DS still turned on afterwards. Well done, Nintendo. And if you want to see more videos of gadgets getting pulverised, head over to stuff.tv.